Um, hi, hello, good afternoon, good morning for those of you who are um, in the Americas. Thank you very much for uh, joining our um, webinar today. Um, uh, first of all, allow me to introduce the team who will be speaking to you today. Uh, my name is Juan Bonilla and I'm, I'm one of the partners of the labor and employment team um, of the law firm of Cuatro Casas. Um, and I will be here with my partner, um, Lara Vivas, uh, who can introduce herself. So, Lara, if you can make a quick Thanks introduction. So so sure, thanks so much. Uh, this is Lara Vivas, also a partner this time at the employment department uh, of the of the uh, of the uh, Cuatro Casas team, and we are very happy to have you today with us again for a very brief uh, update of this week's news. <laughs> So thank you very much, Lara. Um, first of all, I mean, I hope all um, in you, your families and your teams are all um, well and safe. Um, um, and, uh, and again, thank you very much for joining us um, this afternoon. Um, as Lara was saying, the purpose of the webinar of today is um, to analyze the, uh, the new recent um, updates on the new legislation affected um, COVID-19 um, to the extent that they might impact uh, the measures that um, the companies are taking as respect to the employees. Um, and in the first place, um, as it happens in, in most of the countries in the world right now, uh, the Spanish government has started to ease restrictions um, in order to back to what they call the new normal um, life. And so we will first analyze uh, a little bit the employment aspects of the reopening of the economy, and particularly the employment measures that companies have to face if they, uh, when they decide to reopen back their businesses um, uh, based on the uh, easing of the restrictions by the government. So the first part of the webinar today will be focused on what are the terms and conditions that the companies might have to observe when they want to reopen um, and, 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 and go back to the market. And then in the second place, uh, and that, that, that first place will Lara will take the lead on that, and then I will um, take the lead on the second part of the presentation, which will be focused more on certain soft measures um, that companies can take. In previous webinars, we've been talking about temporary furloughs, temporary layoff programs for the employees. Uh, then after the reopening of the economy, um, even if it's a slow reopening of the economy and the restrictions are being eased, we will uh, discuss. Uh, alternative soft measures to temporary layoffs and to furloughs that companies might be willing to undertake in, in the future. So this will be the two essential points of the webinar of today. Employment measures uh, derived from the easing of restrictions on the lockdown in the first place. And secondly, uh, soft measures that companies might be willing to consider when they want to, uh, to do a cost-cutting exercise for the company. So, um, I will um, defer it to Lara for that first part of the presentation. Um, there's, there's only one kind of housekeeping issue. If you want to ask any specific question, you can uh, address that and, and send an email to us, and then we will be very pleased to circle back to you and provide with the answers to your questions. This is the email, webinars at quatracasas.com. So you can um, you can um, post your questions there, and Lara and I um, will will be back to you um, as shortly as we can possibly. So uh, before further ado on that, um, I will pass it to you, Lara, so you can um, start on the reopening of the economy, which is something we've been very much looking forward for the for the last weeks, as you might all figure it out. Very well, thanks a lot, Juan. Let's then move on to a little bit of this week's update on the reactivation, as you said, of the economy in the Spanish market. What we had was a, a very surprising, this was very surprising news last week with the program from the government of how to uh, reactivate the economy and lower the measures and the restriction measures of movement and restrictions of activity for the companies and the citizens in Spain. What was revealed last week was a, uh, a de-escalation and reactivation of the current situation in four phases. As you see in the, in the, in the slide, there's uh, phase zero, one, two, and three. Those phases uh, would be uh, 
slowly reopening the market and they are delimited for different activities. We drafted here, we, we, we just put here what the employment consequences would be, generally speaking, but there's also a chart uh, delimiting the specific measures that are available for different industries. Let's say the commerce, uh, hospitality, other industries that could be affected and that have restrictions. Um, as you see in the phases here, there's phase one that is simply delimiting um, the different, uh, the, 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 the one in purple that you see in the first place. This is a phase that is simply telling us that uh, there's a little bit more of uh, opening. Then you see the yellow, which, which is gonna allow, uh, generally speaking, a 30% of the, of the activities generally speaking. Stage two will be allowing 50% of the activities and then stage three should be the normal, the new normal, which is as it is defined by the government. And this could be the new normal maintained for quite a period of time. Um, further to these uh, stages, we have given here an, uh, uh, an example of what is the delimitation for general employment, so not a specific industry. And as you see, the first thing that is available in stage zero and it would last until stage three is uh, a preference to remain at home so so to work from home remote working where possible and as long as positions make it available. There will be then a gradual entrance and exit from work centers and all of that has to be guided by health and safety measures. In stage one, there is a necessary analysis of the health and safety requirements in the different activities. And then of course, this will be guiding the, the further phases uh, up to the new normal, which uh, requires protocols regarding employees' physical uh, reincorporation and health and safety measures. You will listen, you will hear me saying a lot of times this time that there's a lot of health and safety uh, measures that are very, very relevant these days during the confinement. Um, the general guideline that is given to employees, even for state general, so for those who start going back to the offices, is that of course anyone who has symptoms will not go to the office. Anyone who has been in contact with people who could be infected will not be going to public spaces. And of course, when going to work, um, there has to be a maintenance of social distance. When using public transportation, there's a mandatory um, face mask that has to be that has to be used. Um, there's certain specific measures for the use of your own car, so uh, to limit the number of people in the same car. And of course, there's uh, other hygiene measures that have been put in place, such as uh, the cleaning and disinfection of um, public uh, stores at least twice a day. Of course, they have reinforced all personal hygiene, uh, hand washing, uh, sneezing, you know, cleaning hands, uh, washing hands over and over, and obviously not touching mouth, eyes, and nose, and of course, using disposable issues, et cetera. So those measures that were already in place before uh, you know, at the very beginning of all of these, uh, of all these um, situation. Um, so that is the general analysis and the, the way this is going to work. Each of these phases would last for 15 days at least, but it's also true that they ha the Ministry of Health has to determine which are the phases and which are the activities that will be allowed specifically. And also they will need to examine one by one the different territories in Spain to see whether those territories meet the requirements to allow the, you know, the, the different phases and going from one phase to another. So this is a general framework. We'll need to see specifically in each of the territories based on how the pandemic is evolving, uh, whether we can move on to the different stages that have been uh, announced last week. Let me then go uh, to a second point, which is uh, which are the most important and relevant aspects to take into account. As we, as I was saying, um, there's a lot of uh, health and safety measures that are being put in, put in place during these days. Um, there's a lot of regulations for each of the activities and there was quite a lot of um, uh, of regulations that were published only yesterday for different industries on the protocols on how to use the different, uh, on how to operate in the new, in these new phases. Um, 
One key point for this uh, webinar this, this afternoon is that there will be a very clear leadership of the health and safety, the prevention services. And although most of you will be from HR, this will not be the time for only HR perspectives. There is a need for health and safety, uh, health and safety view here because this is the driver that is leading all the new regulations. They are all issued by the Ministry of Health and they all have a very relevant perspective on health and safety. Um, there must be, and we advise you to start working on productive activity resumption protocols and protocols that will maintain the new normal. So this is of urgency that if you don't have one, there will be uh, a very relevant work to do here on your protocols to go back to normal and to ensure that 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 the new that the regulations are are done properly and in accordance with the laws. Um, we've given here to you. We just put here an example for you. This is the hotel and touristic accommodation industry. Um, it, it, just for you to understand, uh, for example, for stage zero, so right now there is nothing at this stage, but for stage one, they are the government is allowing to open hotels, but only uh, without using common areas and also being able to use restaurants, but only with certain restrictions. For some rest for some activities, as you may imagine, this doesn't really make sense from a business perspective, and that has it, this is giving raise to quite a lot of questions for 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 a number of industries that just look at the reopening as a non-viable situation in some of the cases. So in key points for this, the leadership will be for the health and safety. There's a, a necessary, we need to necessarily adapt inside the work center. So distance, shift, hygiene measures, personal protection measures, etc. We need to start thinking of protocols to undertake and to ensure uh, compliance with all of these measures, such as uh, test and temperature, which I will just speak about in a second. And uh, we'll need to take care of especially sensitive employees, those that might get sick or earlier, identify and adapt their work. And of course, uh, put in place remote working and psychosocial measures for those who will remain at home. Um, let me just go to these other three questions. Um, first, what happens if, you know, we, we, once we learn what's going to be applicable to our industry, what happens if we cannot put in place uh, those measures or if they are not, if they're just not, not viable from an economic perspective? Well, one uh, solution would be to use the ERTE due to force majeure, like most of the companies have done already earlier during this process. Um, it, it is possible and it's still possible to use a force majeure if we cannot uh, ensure compliance with the health and safety measures. So the again, the health and safety services will need to issue a certificate to ensure that this is not possible in this particular industry due to whatever ma material uh, circumstances uh, concur in this situation. Of course, if we don't do that properly, there's a risk that the employees or the employees' representatives paralyze the productive activity. We saw that very early during the, the in the early beginning of the of the uh, of pandemia, where uh, certain companies had to stop working because of the pressure from employees that did not want to get infected, and therefore they were really trying to put pressure on companies by stating that the health and safety measures could not be, uh, could not be uh, uh, secured by the companies. Um, we, of course, also see, uh, as you see, this, this point, uh, this question four, what happens during the pandemic if it's possible to implement, implement ad hoc measures, right? So what happens if we can materially do it? Can we actually go ahead and put it in place? And there's a lot of questions these last days about temperature control. Um, well, first thing is that, well, temperature tests are a health and safety measures, measure that is, uh, of course, on, that belong to the specialty of health control. And it, they affect privacy. They affect privacy because this is not the usual data that we would get from them. And therefore, interference or adoption of measures uh, that interfere with privacy or with uh, with uh, the, the yes with privacy require sufficient grounds, and this is a general a general regulation in Spain, like in the rest of Europe, I would say. 
So what happens? How do we do it these days? Is it possible, first of all, to take uh, these measures? And the first guideline here is, yes, it's possible, uh, but we need to make sure that this is a measure uh, that this is the measure that we need to ensure uh, security for our employees. If there's other security measures that we could put in place instead of uh, temperature controls, then we would need to use those other, uh, those other measures. Who can we control? Then, well, can of course control our own employees, that's for sure. Um, this has been uh, admitted by by the Spanish government and by the courts because they they allow the protection of all employees. So this is a measure that protects everyone's health, and this has been accepted. Can we do that to third party employees? Well, in that case, we need to coordinate with the health and safety uh, services of the rest of the companies. Can our employees be also tested by other companies? Then again, we need to ensure that we coordinate properly with the health and safety uh, protocols of other companies. How about uh, other uh, employee, other third parties? So no employees from other companies, but just clients or other, other, uh, other, other third par parties. Well, the, the the answer again is yes, we can do that, but this has to be adjusted and, and justified by our health and safety services. So it's a health and safety decision, or at least recommendation that requires um, to be, uh, that, that, that has to be there on the background to ensure that we can take other, other measures. And finally, who can do these tests? Who can take temperature? Well, in principle, it has to be the health and safety services because those are the ones who uh, include the medical services uh, for, for, for any health and safety and for any company. There has been some debate about whether security people can be taking health and uh, uh, temperature tests and for that purpose, in, we would say that in principle, it has to be the health and safety service, but this uh, health, and safety, health and safety service could identify other people who could potentially take those tests. So this as far as the temperature test and control uh, has been uh, um, uh, put in place and, and, and these are the main questions that we have been receiving on that topic. Of course, uh, what can we do, what happens and what can we do if um, if we find employees who find uh, who, who are who have been signaled by the tests and they show up that they have passed the pandemia or the COVID-19, well, of course, uh, we will need to maintain health and safety measures. We cannot just simply say that they are fine. And of course, we need to make sure that those employees who have been in contact with the virus are really not uh, contagious other employees, which is really something that, that, that we need to take care. And in Spain for now, there is no such a thing as a, as a passport on, on, your, on your tests or antiviruses that you have, may have developed so far. So at this stage, all we have is uh, measures that determine uh, the, the, the exposure that employees may have had to the pandemic. Uh, I have a couple more questions and then Juan will go on. Uh, first is whether there, whether we need to take any specific measure, health and safety measure, for certain employees. And on that point, I, uh, we have to say that yes, there's a number of employees which we call especially vulnerable. These are employees, first, who are older than 60. And for those, there's no excuse. We should know as, a, as HR and as a company who is older than 60, and we need to take action with them. So from a health and safety per perspective, we have to compulsory make a medical examination for those employees to ensure that whether they can work or not work or whether we can adjust their workspace to make it safer. And of course, there's a number of other people, diabetes, cardiovascular illnesses, uh, chronic hepatic illnesses, and so on, that may be uh, uh, especially vulnerable, but those we don't necessarily know. So the health and the HR department should offer to everyone and should tell everyone to reveal to the health and safety services whether they are included in any of those uh, categories. And of course, there's also what we call, you see it in, the, in this platform, we, you saw the SE, this is the special employees or special, specially sensitive employees. And these are employees whose job position is not um, 
sorry, is not possible to adapt. So it's a reasonable uh, for for whom it's. So we will need to adjust their work position because they are especially sensible, sensitive, and for those employees, we would need to make changes to the workplace. However, if that's not possible, if it's not possible to change uh, those those places of work. The health and, service, uh, health and, and safety services will need to inform this, the specific person and potentially uh, work on a, on a sick leave if they are really not uh, able to work uh, due to their special condition. With that said, um, just as a summary, make sure that you take the uh, necessary action that you do it very proactively and that you make sure that you have your different protocols uh, meaning the the one for the reactivation now but also the ones to maintain the reduced activity potentially derived by the phase two and of course uh, make sure that you have your protocols in case of finding someone who's contagious and that you have those uh, protocols also uh necessary to coordinate with other employees so protocols is the new the new work we will all need to do uh juan if you want to go on with these soft measures for cost savings Let's see if Juan can also get connected. Yeah, sorry, I was oh. <laughs> I was a <mute. laughs> But I was just saying thank you very much for your great explanation on the particularly on the health and safety measures that companies will have to look out um, whenever they are reopening their businesses as part of the easing of restrictions by the government. Um, so my my role will be now to try to um, analyze a number of different options uh, on cost uh, cutting exercises um, right now uh, after uh, the return the return at work. So there's, there's either I mean, there's a number of companies who have put employees on temporary layoffs or temporary furloughs who, because of the uh, restrictions being lifted, uh, people will will start to be back at the company. There are other companies who haven't done any temporary layoff or any temporary furlough pr processes and that uh, will still be working, but have realized that the level of businesses will not be as high as uh, prior to the COVID-19 sanitary crisis. So companies are now considering different options. Of course, we have the option of uh, conducting redundancies or conducting terminations of employment but there's also the possibility to do <clears throat> what we call soft measures that might not have a, a bad reputational impact on the companies, uh, but who might also uh, adjust the salary costs to um, some of the expectations derived from the uh, new potential turnover of the company. So, uh, as, as you might possibly have considered in internally in your own organizations, there is one um, major possibility, which is to try to consider a reduction of salary. So, reduction of salary has been implemented in a number of companies as by means of a voluntary reduction, um, which is fixed term, so it's temporary. So, a typical example would be uh, for the managers of the company, for the executives of the company, to voluntarily agree to, uh, let's say, 10%, 20%, 30% reduction on the base salary, um, either on a three-month basis or on a six-month basis, or even on a one-year basis. Um, and that will uh, uh, be uh, implemented as part of a cost casting exercise so that the executives will be able to show to the rest of the employees uh, they are also playing a part on the um, facilitation of the uh, adaptation of the salary to the uh, current environment. So it is possible to apply for a voluntary reduction program to the extent that individuals um, give their individual consent and to the extent that the salary cut is temporary in its scope, you know, that is a perfect possibility. Um, what happens if we want to implement the salary reduction on a mandatory basis? So we want all the employees to agree and all the employees to accept to the reduction of salary. Well, there are a number of ways to do that, but essentially we might need to run into a collective consultation process with the Works Council so that we will enter into a process which we call uh, a special alterations of employment conditions 
which after uh, conducting a, a consultation process with the Welsh Council or with the unions, we will be able to um, implement a mandatory uh, salary reduction program as well. Uh, in either case, either if it's uh, as part of a voluntary reduction program or a mandatory reduction program, this reduction of salary can be implemented with or without reduction of working time. So, a typical example would be to offer a voluntary reduction program whereby uh, the executives will uh, agree or will consent to a 20% reduction of a salary without any reduction of working time. So, they will work the same, but they will be paid less. Uh, for an all employee plan, it is much more uh, common practice to um, offer a voluntary reduction with reduction of working time. So the typical example here would be to offer a scheme of uh, four days a week of work and then being paid an 80% of the salary and that corresponds to one day more of holidays. So that's perfectly possible and all the options um, can be implemented in, in Spain um, with or without salary reduction. Of course, uh, if there's a mandatory reduction of salary without reduction of working time, consultation process might be a little bit more difficult than if it is with reduction of working time. Again, that is perfectly possible. And, and just finally, particularly based on the um, still uh, restrictions on movement, each signature of any voluntary reduction program will um, be perfectly fine as well. So that's 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 the most kind of um, sensitive option, which is the reduction of salary, which, as I said, it can be implemented on a voluntary or on a mandatory basis. We can uh, consider also other options, and um, particularly we can try to defer the payment of the annual bonuses. Of course, in order to defer the payment of the annual bonuses, we might also need consent of the employees. We might need to wait um, until uh, the employees have given their individual consent. Uh, we might need to negotiate with the unions as well. Um, but that's also a possibility that some companies are currently considering at the moment. Uh, another option is that some companies are um, currently trying to adapt or modify the targets um, for the annual bonus. Um, so companies have realized that with the new current economic environment, it will be extremely difficult to complete the targets that were set at the beginning of the year. Um, and some companies are saying that, you know, the targets that were initially set will not be uh, incentivizing that much the employees. So some companies are currently adopting the targets. So even, even providing for very short term targets so that employees can be incentivized and they can still um, do sales in the way the company wants, the, particularly the sales team members to do the sales. Um, an alternative option as well is different promotions or um, pro some companies call the promotion fee. Um, so it is also um, relatively possible. It depends on the collective bargaining agreement that will apply to the business. Um, because there is, of course, a distinction in between what we call a legal merit increase, which is the typical one or two percent required by the collective agreement, and what we call a promotion uh, merit increase, which will be based on performance. So that might be also something to consider, and that's also a feasible option in Spain. Of course, a hiring free companies can implement a hiring free without even communicating that. So that might be as part of an internal policy. Um, and of course, we would just need to look at as to whether there's been any offer letters that have been previously made and that will be also uh, frozen as part of the hiring free process because there might be some damages associated with this. Um, but that is again a perfectly available um, option. And then just to end up with this kind of soft measures or cost saving exercises, there's some companies Companies are currently structuring a reduction of salary linked with um, um, the uh, grants uh, of uh, new options. So, for instance, we can make use of what we call employee equity, which is a grant of employee stock options, a grant of restricted share units, restricted share awards or even the opportunity for the employees to participate in an employee share purchase plan so that the uh, reduction of salary will be compensated with a potential upside of the increase on the value of the shares in the years to come. So now, because of the soft change value is relatively low as compared to the value that we had some months ago, um, if the companies are structuring a reduction on salary with the grants of um, future shares, um, 
considering that the value of the shares is likely to go down to similar levels before the COVID-19 crisis, that might be also an option to consider um, um, for the as a, as a kind of a supplementary uh, or an additional consideration to the reduction of salary. So some companies are currently implementing uh, this um, kind of exchange of base salary with um, the grant of new employee equity, and it's been very successful in order to facilitate the employee consent on a reduction of salary. So these are all options that are all feasible that you might all want to consider, um, particularly after the reopening of the economy and reopening um, of the business and the back to the new normal life, um, as the government is calling it. Um, and all of them are feasible, and of course that would require some uh, either uh, documents that will need to be uh, consented individually by the employees and the executives, or some consultation process with the work sales. But at least there might be options to consider that are not um, being uh, as highly critical on reputational levels as particularly to implement some redundancies, or particularly a collective redundancy case. And this is a final very quick point uh, in terms of the uh, return to the judicial activity. Um, you might have known that all the court cases, well, most of the court cases, but in practice, all of the court cases on the employment side were postponed because the courts were actually uh, closed down because of the lockdown. Now uh, we're still looking forward to receiving further um, definition from the or final determination from the um, courts as to whether health and safety measures, the health and safety measures that Lara was talking at the beginning of the presentation, how they would apply to the court um, rooms and to the facilities of the courts and to the buildings, particularly where the courtrooms are located and where um, people and lawyers and companies representatives will have to um, appear in person um, in the next days or in the next weeks to come. Um, so just simply to let you know that still the court um, hearings are being postponed, but as some sort of return to normal life or reopening of the courts is expected also very soon. So if you have a pending judicial case, and it will be also helpful to start preparing this because we still don't know if it will be reopening next week or in three weeks, but it is likely to um, come relatively soon. So these are all or less in the comments um, that I wanted to raise. And uh, Lara, if you just simply want to um, summarize a little bit and send a thank you note to the audience. Absolutely. So thank you, Juan. This, this is also a great alternative to have in mind so that we can still make some strategic decisions for the company. I would say that the takeaways for today are, uh, first, be proactive in terms of the protocols and the strategy that you want to take for the new, uh, the new phases of these, uh, of, these, um, of these restrictions in activities. Make sure that you already have a plan in place before you start. And that's very, very relevant. Second point, be very, uh, very uh, updated on the health and safety news that may be in place because those are not yet published for all industries and they, they seem to be uh, late in, in terms of determining what the new activities will be for each of the industries. And number three, keep in mind your alternatives. There's other things that we can do um, and other alternatives that you may put in place to try to balance out the situation with the uh, business needs. Uh, and lastly, uh, make sure that if you had any claims or that if you if there's potential procedures that were there, make sure that you keep an eye on those because uh, they will be reactivated. This also entails that if you need to put any sanction, anything that any action that has to be taken by the company, those actions that were also suspended, they will also be reactivated. And with that said, we just want to thank you very much for attending our webinar this week as well. Uh, and we just wish that you all stay safe and stay home. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed.